at the Esther Press Conference and I am delighted to introduce you to my friend, Rachel Gilbert. Rachel and I have been friends for quite a while. If you've been around the Spark community for a while, you've probably seen Rachel around. She was part of the radio collaboration with KHCB. Um, I think we first met at the Declare Conference in maybe 2017. It was like I was just in the very beginning stages of writing and I remember, I'm gonna tell a little story on you. Uh -oh. <laughs> so this was back when people first started going live mm -hmm. and you were like, just do it. And you were just encouraging people. And I remember how afraid I was to, I don't know what it was about the technology, the camera, the awkwardness. And I remember you just, encouraged me so much. So you've been just a special part of my journey and where God has had me. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we're here at the Esther Press Conference and you just got done speaking. So I heard a little bit about your session. Do you want to talk a little bit more? Weren't you talking about surrender? Um, we were talking about identity. Identity. Yeah. Okay, so one person on the panel talked about surrender. Um, maybe. Yeah. So there was a panel of us. Yeah. And okay. we, yeah, we yeah. kind of went through a thing of kind of establishing your identity. Okay. And looking looking at some things we've had our identity in that maybe aren't from the Lord and yeah. replacing that with the truth from God's word. And yeah. That was fun. That's good. Yeah. So what, what exactly did you share um, in your time? Yeah. So definitely sh shared some of my own story, but then I also brought a little bit of counselory kind of things in of just teaching people kind of how to challenge some of our thoughts and core beliefs and um, also taught them some butterfly hugs and some Aww. little some little calming grounding techniques and oh that's yeah. so good yeah, it was fun. so you are a counselor mm -hmm. in um, the Dallas Fort Worth area and uh, and so what are you seeing in your counseling practice um, and how are you encouraging people because I I know from another one of our mutual friends um, Michelle Nieder, I remember talking to her saying anxiety is off the charts. Yeah. There are so, we need more counselors because yeah. there are so, so what kinds of things are you seeing in your yeah. practice? It's funny you say that because anxiety, I would say is the biggest for sure. Uh, but then I, I am a trauma informed therapist, so I do a lot of trauma work. Yeah. Um, and so anxiety would be a big one. And then also just, and in some ways this part is encouraging. A lot of women feel like, uh, ready to do the work, you know, like yeah. ready to kind of process some things that they're that have just felt stuck. In yeah, and, yeah. So those would be the two big themes I would say. I'm yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But then also, um, you have a book about body image, mm -hmm. which I love your book because um, you use the analogy you were building your home at the time mm -hmm. when you were writing yeah. the book, right? <laughs> yep. And so it's about being on a foundation. And mm -hmm. so why don't you tell um, the audience a little bit about Image Restored? Yes, yeah, Image Restored. So it is a combination trade book and workbook. And um, there, I, I love that we got to do that because you get to read, but then you also get to process what's coming up while you're reading. So at the end of every chapter, we've got journaling prompts. We have strong foundation verses for them to stand on. And then there's also six counselor cornerstones where it's actually video teachings from me that you get. And we get to go deeper into kind of a, each unit has a different teaching with it that we're bringing up and talking about. Obviously, you know, body image, is, it's a bigger deal than it's deeper than just the body. Right. And so right. that's why so often I, I do see people who read my book and then they end up coming to me for counseling or finding their own counselor because it brought some things up in them that initially they thought they were doing some body work and they're like oh actually this is tied um which we see that a lot when it comes to body image and eating disorders especially there's usually lots of unprocessed trauma around yeah it. Mm -hmm. yeah i yeah. could see that mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so that, now you also um you also podcast mm -hmm. right so yes. real talk with rachel yes yes and so how many years have you been podcasting i uh, i should keep count I want to say six years. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's fun that you mentioned that I inspired you because you've also inspired me in the podcasting. So it's fun how the Lord does that, right? We, yeah. We, one person helps the other and then we just kind of bounce back and forth. And so, yeah, yeah uh, podcasting, I, it's so fun to me. It's probably my favorite thing I do. Just yeah. Being, I love being a counselor, but podcasting is just, as you know, you get to meet so many amazing people and Absolutely. just all kinds of fun things. Um, yeah. Yeah, but what's your biggest ch uh, challenge with podcasting? Oh, biggest challenge. For me, the time, uh, just 
get it, you know, especially interviews, guest interviews are my favorite, but it takes some coordination in, in doing all of that. But outside of that, that's really it. Like to me, podcasting isn't super challenging because yeah. I love it so much. You no. know, when you're doing something the you same. love that I'm like, now tech, I don't love the tech. I don't I'm love never going to love the tech. I, I, can't, I deal with it, but yeah, that would be the other thing I would say. I'm like, eh, I could, I could do without the tech, but that's why we have amazing people who can edit and produce the shows. That right? is so. absolutely right. I am so thankful because I am not technical at all. And I hate it when people come to me with technical questions. I'm like, let me go to my people. Uh -huh. um, so uh, in terms of podcasting, your show's been part of the KHCB mm -hmm. radio, and you and I have talked about video, which makes sense for me to, I see you on video podcasting mm -hmm. because you were the one way back when yeah. that was encouraging me to do video. And yeah. so I know we talked a little bit about that and I hope to see that in your future because it's really interesting how when when I started way back when you started it was really podcasting was really audio only mm -hmm. um, but then with TikTok and what that's done to social media and um, you know we just need a lot of content out yeah. there so what, what's your favorite uh, the, the people obviously are the best part of podcasting yeah. um, but what are some other things that, that you like about podcasting um, yeah, well, like you said, I love people. I love getting to just hear people's stories and then pull the gold out of them, um, you know, just like you do as well. And then I think it's just fun to me. It's another vehicle to get the gospel to the ends of the earth. Amen, right? sister. And that's so right. that's how I view it. And that's why, as you mentioned, yes, I would love to do video someday just because I think, okay, that's another vehicle, that's right? right? And the Lord will, I've seen that in my ministry, and I'm sure you've seen this too where the Lord will say, okay, you've been in this vehicle. I want you to drive this vehicle now. And, you know, sometimes we're kind of crossing over between the two, but it's just fun to see. They're all just vehicles, and it's just, where's the Lord taking me? Let me jump in, and let's go. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's a great analogy. Yeah. If you, uh, There's a table in front of us. Y'all can't see that. Mm -hmm. But on the side of the tablecloth, it says, changing the world one podcast mm -hmm. at a time. Yeah. And when God gave me Spark Media, that was really my heart, mm -hmm. was we all have the responsibility of the great commission. We are all to go into all the earth and to proclaim the gospel. Well, that's not always practical to hop on a plane to go somewhere. Um, and podcasting has made it in the internet. Like yeah. we live in this incredible time in history where I can sit in the comfort of my own home. You can yeah. be in your office or wherever you're podcasting. We can be here at a yeah. conference together and we can reach people and give them yep. hope. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, you reminded me, I have to share this, that two weeks ago I was in a, on a mission trip in Norway and met some amazing people there and, I, and they, you know, I was able to tell them, oh yeah, I have this podcast. And the next week on Apple Podcasts, my podcast was top charts in Norway. Oh, that's so and cool. why that's so cool to me is it's just, like you said, if I had met these people and I didn't have something I could have pointed them to, right? we would have maybe never seen each other again or heard from, you know, but now I get to keep pouring into them. Oh, that's so I'm cool. I'm over here in the United States. They're over there in Norway. So there you go. One that more. Yeah. is so cool. <laughs> that's really neat. Yeah. Okay. I want to circle back because I think that this is something really important that we can all kind of take something away from. So you said anxiety mm. is a big issue with, with people. I think young people a lot, I think, Something that I recently read was there's a correlation, and you're probably going to know this better than I will, but there's a correlation with social media mm -hmm. use and anxiety. Um, I don't think that, um, you know, 2020 helped that at yeah. all, you know? Yeah. Um, so if there's somebody maybe who is watching this who struggles with anxiety, um, or maybe they even have anxiety about starting a podcast. Yeah. I know that there's a lot of mindset issues around, you know, people aren't gonna wanna listen to me, or what would you say, first of all, to give someone hope yeah. um, who may be struggling with anxiety today? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, that's a great question, because you're right. I, I don't meet many people, myself included, that don't struggle with some anxiety, right? And so I love to help people have some tools and, 
Um, you know, you mentioned social media, and that is obviously a big culprit, but I even would take it a step further and say our phones. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about it, um, what that does to us, and don't get me wrong, I'm not a phone hater. I love tech, right, you know? Right. But it, even if you get notifications of things, it's kind of keeping us on edge, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I need to check in, I need to. So we're, we're expecting ourselves to be on a lot and mm -hmm. be available a lot. And so if you, that's you and you're struggling with some anxiety, whether it's social media and phone related or like Misty said, you're feeling like, hey, I'd like to start something. I, I like to just encourage people, start by tuning in to what's happening in, within yourself instead mm, of, good. it's so tempting to just say, let me just push through and do this. And sometimes that's what we need to do is step out in faith, right? And overcome fears. Right. But there's a difference in maybe having a little bit of fear about something versus Oh, I'm really just feeling anxious. And so I like to tell people, just pop, like tune into yourself, soften, good. go for a walk, go watch the sunrise, watch it, like just be and let those nerves kind of calm, yes. see where this might be coming from. And then in that calm, then it's easier also to hear from the Lord and That's like right. just, you know, and obviously even sitting with the Lord is going to bring calm in many ways. And so that's just a simple tip of just let yourself be like, I kind of stop and go, where's this? What's this about? What's this related to? Because mm -hmm. I feel like we're, we numb out a lot, which really is what social media can be too. Right. It's like, actually, I have something else going on. And then I go to something like that to just kind of numb and not deal with really what's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. Mm -hmm. So one of my things that I learned a very, very long time ago with social, I have no notifications I don't on my phone mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. um, so if, you reach out to me and it's a while before I get to you. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because I literally don't have notifications. I use the do not disturb function yep. on my phone and my computer all the time because, because of that very thing. Yeah. Yep. It can be such a big distraction. And uh, there's a book that my son read in college. It's called Into the Shallows. Ooh. And it does the brain, it's the brain research behind what the internet has done to our brain because it's shortened our mm -hmm. attention span. It's, it's made us more shallow getting these short bite-sized pieces of content. And like you said, the endorphins and the, yep. um, where you constantly feel like I've got to be there. I got to, you know, um, and what that does to our brain. And so I, um, really try to like put my phone down and read a real book yep. and not just listen to the audio or the podcast, but actually read to help with my brain because yep. we do live in this very fast food, want yep. it now world that can make us very anxious. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's so good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for all you do. Um, Y'all follow Rachel online if you're not. She mm -hmm. does like some, I love your reels that you do mm -hmm. when you're like out for a walk yeah. and you just like bring this nugget from the Lord and you share it. It's always so inspiring. So thank let everybody you. know where they can connect with you. Yeah. Yeah. So on Instagram, I'm at Rachel J. Gilbert. You do spell my name with an A. Thanks mom and dad for that. <laughs> R-A-C-H-A-E-L. And then my website is rachelgilbert.com. That's where you can find the podcast and all those fun things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So great. Well, congratulations for all that you're doing. Thank Excited you. for all the things you have coming up. And thanks for spending a few minutes with me. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah.